Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today I have a very interesting guest. Her name is Melissa Tong from Duck Punk Production. And we're gonna find out about everything that she does. She's already been telling us a little bit <laughs> <laughs> of what we're doing here. Well, that's what we get for having a production person yeah, come up. Absolutely. <laughs> this is a very um, amateur production here. No, that's okay. You know, this is Facebook Live. So yeah, it's Facebook yeah. Live and Instagram Live. Exactly. So tell us, um, and we're also making a drink before we get into the drink. Of course, we're going to talk to Melissa. Uh -huh. But we're making a drink called Malibu's Most Wanted. It was a movie, kind of going along yeah, with your yeah. being in production. Okay, <laughs> all right. I can't wait to try this drink. Exactly. <laughs> so, Tell me uh, what you do, what this Duck Punk Productions do. Okay, so Duck Punk Productions is an award-winning video marketing and content production company. So we do everything from uh, TV commercials, content for the web, the, you know, the web, digital content, uh, to independent movies, documentaries, and um, TV commercials. So in the past, we've worked a lot with Fortune 500 companies such as Nissan, Verizon, Wells Fargo, and we've done a lot of their um, big TV commercial campaigns. And now our clients are really anywhere from start, you know, from a solopreneur all the way to you know big Fortune 500 companies. So we have a big range in terms of clients and a big range in terms of the budget as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. So and you're located here in Culver City. Yeah, I'm located. Okay here in Culver City. I've been living and working on this side of town for over 20 years. Wow. Yeah. So tell us a few that you've actually worked on that we've seen. Sure. A um, couple years ago, I did a anti-smoking campaign. Anti-smoking. Uh, okay. Yeah. And in it, um, they blasted this spot everywhere on all major networks, you know, Fox, CBS, you know, uh, WBs, you know, NBC, you name it. So it's it's an ad with uh, with a African American kid using an inhaler. So I don't know if you remember. I can actually show you. I still have the commercial itself. It's just thirty seconds long, but there was no dialogue. But the imaging was so um, so powerful that I actually had people come up to me afterwards and say, "Wow." I actually quit smoking because I saw your ad. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that's great. Yeah, and we also raised the 1-800 number calls by 70%. Okay, 1-800 numbers. The hotline, you know, the anti-smoking you know, oh, okay, hotline gotcha. okay. numbers. They have dedicated hotline for people to call in uh -huh. to try to get help to uh -huh. help them quit. And so you got more people to call. Yeah, so we got there, you know, we got a 70% increase okay. in terms of getting people to call in. Now, who who hired you to do something like that, or did, was that something that was a project that you did on your own? No, we were hired to do that. Okay. So we were hired by an advertising agency, who who was the agency of record for the California Department of Health. I see. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. That is yeah. amazing. What else have you done that you want that you're really proud of that uh, that you want to share? Let's <laughs> see. So. Um, so aside from TV commercials, I also make independent movies. So the okay. last movie I made was actually, you know, maybe six years ago or so. But it's always nice when you see your movie on projected on a big screen. Of and course. then when your name comes up, I, I can't tell you the satisfaction. I, I get it every single time, although I've done it multiple times. But every time I see my name, you know, projected on a big screen, I always feel like, wow. It's all worth it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's very gratifying. What was the movie called? The movie is called Touch. It's actually on Amazon, Hulu, and um, iTunes, and it's about a girl who works at a nail salon, and she befriends a male client who comes in to try to get his nails cleaned every day, and then they end up striking a friendship, and she ends up helping him with his marriage. It's a oh. dramedy. Oh. Yeah, and we can find it on Netflix. Uh, yeah, I believe it's on Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's called Touch. It's called T -O -U -C -H. Touch. T-O-U-C-H. Right. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to look for that. Yeah, look for it. And it's a, it has your name on it. Yeah, it's a producer. Yeah. Producer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Any questions out there so far? Candan says she remembers the smoking commercial. Oh! Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. <And> Hi, Candan. <laughs> she also says... What industry do you prefer working in? Like, do you prefer doing stuff for fashion and beauty, or do you prefer doing things like causes like smoking and cancer? 
Well, I I always find myself like I'm, I have one foot in entertainment and then another foot in advertising. Mm. So the entertainment side is the, my movies, my documentaries. The advertising side is my it's my marketing, you know, TV commercials, it's my digital content, it's, it's all of that. So, you know, I, I don't want to pick and say, okay, I want to do one and not the others because they're both different. I mean, I'm really, a, you know, a storyteller. So I love telling stories from a, from a entertainment perspective. I also love telling stories on the advertising, from the advertising pers perspective. Because if you really, if you really can hone in on the messaging, it can be very powerful either way. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and your commercial. Definitely, if it impacted so many people, yeah, and that's awesome. You know? Yeah, exactly. And, and you, not even just seeing your name up there, but that is a reward that yeah, that you will it will just stay with you. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So I just love that process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great question, Candace. Thank you. Any questions from you? Yes. Where was the commercial shown? It was shown on all the major networks, um, Fox, CBS. WB, uh, NBC, um, but it was a few years ago. Okay. So I don't know when they'll rotate it back out again. I'm not sure. I don't. In, I'm not in charge of the distribution portion of it. So yeah. Was it nationwide? Is but I can I can give you guys a link if you want to see it. I have the link. I can just send you guys a YouTube link. And post we'll it. put it. We'll post it yes. on there yeah. definitely, so everybody can see it. Yeah. Was it also nationwide commercial? Or yeah, it was okay. nationwide. Okay. Yeah. okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Does your company offer internship opportunities? Ah, from time to time. Yeah. Did you quit smoking? I never smoked. Oh. <laughs> good, good for you. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> Me either. Yeah. So, what inspired you to get into the production field? Uh, I started telling stories since '94. So right out from college, I got a job as a TV news anchor, reporter, and producer. And at the time, because <laughs> I was a newbie, they gave me a five-minute human interest segment every day. So they said, okay, go and cover anything but hot news. So I did everything from beauty, technology, uh, science, health, entertainment stories, red carpet events, movie premieres, you name it. So I was telling a five-minute story every single day for four years. Wow. interviewed thousands of people from all walks of life and covered over 1,200 stories before I started my own production company. So I would have to say that I somehow fell into it. It wasn't like by design. I didn't go, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I want to be a storyteller, I'm gonna get into you know, this field. But somehow, I guess, you know, the, the universe will lead you to what you're supposed to be doing. What station was that that you were using? That was the International Channel. They're one okay. of the very first satellite TV stations in the US. Nice. Where are you from? I'm from Hong Kong originally. I've been living here since 91. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. So do you, um, did you do any of the movies like back home or do you go back there to do any of your Well, production? I've not done any movies back home yet, although I would love to someday. Uh, I did go back and worked on some uh, TV commercial campaigns for for one of the biggest casinos in Macau called Macau Galaxy, and yeah, and now and and I actually stayed at the hotel for twenty one days. Wow, that's the longest I ever stayed at the same hotel. <laughs> that's all I know. I know they kept upgrading me. In the end, I had a big suite, but I I was still you know just working. I didn't really have time to really, you know, kick back and enjoy. Let's put it that way. So if somebody new, somebody young, wanted to start off doing this, what advice would you give them? I would say really try out different. Um, because even in production, there are a lot of different areas you can focus on. You can be a camera person, you can be a lighting person, you can be a wardrobe person, you could be producing, you could be directing, you could be writing. So I would say if you don't quite know yet, try them all out and then see which, which, um, which area speaks to you the most and then focus on that. Because I mean, there's so many different facets in terms of you know being in production. So don't be... Don't be, don't get frustrated if one area doesn't work out. You can always jump to do the next. Good advice. Good advice. Any other questions? 
Not yet? Okay. Well, we're going to make a drink. We, okay. we styled yes. um, <laughs> we styled <laughs> Melissa in all of these. Well, she came dressed yeah. in this beautiful color that's also, I think, going to go with our drink color. Right. I, so we styled her in some of these Keshi pearls that are in um, a purplish pink color. And, and then we one. have some uh, pink glass beads that she's wearing. And then she came with that necklace yeah. on. And our drink is going to pretty much mimic that color. And then um, my production person here who um, put out all these wonderful little purple and black stuff, we're making a drink with blackberries. So we're doing um, black onyx, black juicy, and then just amethyst and garnets. They're all colors that kind of remind me of blackberries. And um, our drink today is called the Malibu's Most Wanted. And we're gonna do, start off with muddling these blackberries. So all I have is some blackberries in here. And I'm gonna just kind of squish them until the juices kind of release. And then I'm gonna add some ice to this. And then you're going to put a little bit of 7-Up or Sprite. I think that in itself is really nice mm -hmm. already. Yeah. But we're going to add some rum. <laughs> and this is some Malibu rum with coconut liqueur. So it has a nice um, coconut scent to it. And I'm going to add, and then we're going to do a little bit of swirling, <laughs> garnish it with that. And to top it all off, I have some rosemary. And this smells so good, if you could smell it. Oh yeah. Can you smell that? Yeah, I love rosemary. So I'm just going to kind of let that do that. Okay. You'll wow. get to taste it. This is so pretty. It is pretty, <laughs> huh? Goes Very with your pretty. So well. yes. It does. It matches your shirt and your jewelry. I had no idea purple, you know, was the And she didn't know. I didn't know. She didn't know. We like, didn't tell see, her. The universe. <laughs> exactly. Okay. All so right. tell us Let's how you see. like it and see if it. Uh, mm. It's, uh, it's actually very refreshing yeah? for the hot weather. Can you taste the rum? Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, It's not overpowering, but it's good. Yeah. And the blackberry flavor comes through? Yeah, and the rosemary flavor too. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think you should all try this drink because yeah. it is such a fun, mm -hmm. beautiful drink and it can be something that you could do with your girlfriends for brunch. Right. Or, nice. you know, even for a happy hour, a little party, get together at your place. Um, it's all, it's very easy. You saw how fast it was to put it together. Yeah. And Melissa and I actually met because we go to this event called Women About Town. It's what? Um, and it's it's a great thing. It's a great event, yeah. It's a great event. This lady, Marissa, she puts it on. Um, she is amazing how she gets all of these venues and I know and she does happen. it every month I don't know how she I does know, it and she's this month. pregnant yeah. right now um, but anyway the last one I went to uh, Melissa was there and it was at the Intercontinental Hotel and um, it was all just sweets desserts and drinks Nitrogen ice cream. I Nitrogen never ice cream. That. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, it looked kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that thing was just bubbling, but yeah. it's like, it was it's very, like special effects. <laughs> it was very much special yeah. effects. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure you appreciated that yeah, during the yeah, well, yeah. But anyway, the, it's a really wonderful um, way to meet people along with. Uh, do you belong to our Chamber of Commerce? Not yet. I used to. Okay. Like I said, years, a couple years ago. Um, but I kind of quit 
Okay. So I haven't I haven't come back to you know check out the events yet. Oh well, please do. Yeah. Please come back. So we usually have a, a mixer, you know, after five mixer, and right. also a breakfast meeting. Yeah. And then they also have this division called the um, Women in Business, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so yeah. I hope that you can come to that. Yeah. I'm actually being honored um, at the October luncheon. Oh, okay. So right. I've got to come to that you one. you got to come. <laughs> I would be, it would be great yeah. to have you there. Okay. Is there anything else that you want them to know? Do you want them to know your website? Um, yeah, sure. And then we will put the link to the commercial for you mm -hmm. so that you can... Um, and then if you have more questions, Melissa's tagged on my Facebook, mm -hmm. and then she can also be tagged on the Instagram and you guys can ask more questions. Is there more questions out there? No more? Okay. No more comments? <laughs> okay, so All do right. you want them to know? Yeah, you? sure. So besides directing and producing, um, I also teach people how to be a rock star on camera. How to be a rock star? On camera, ah. like what we're doing now, right? <laughs> because if you're small business owners, you know, a lot of people started using Facebook Live, you yes. know, Instagram stories to promote their business. But at the same time, you know, they say, oh, I'm, I'm so nervous, you know, in front of the camera, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to wear, I don't know what to say. So I teach people how to do all of that. So I have two websites. One is for my main business, you know, duckpunk.net, D-U-C-K-P-U-N-K.net. And the other one about how to be a rock star on camera is really easy. It's really um, rockstaroncamera.com. And I can post the link for you guys as well. That's very interesting. Yeah. How did I do? You did, you did really well. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing this for a while. So, oh, yeah. I was, I've been very nervous in, in the beginning, you know, and it still takes a little bit, you know, and you get used to it is what really right, happens. Right, yeah. You know, after a while, you just kind of forget, I guess you're talking to people. I think for us here, it's easy because there's only two girls filming. Right. And um, it's not so overwhelming. Right. But, you know, when you have like a whole bunch of people, it can be really... And also, I would have to say the cell phones, they're not that intimidating because it's so small. It's so small. But if, if I go and film people with a real camera, people will be like, whoa. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they freeze in front of the camera. It's like, oh, I totally you know, can't remember what I'm supposed to say. You know, I'm sweating. <laughs> and there's so. also something more organic about doing it, you know, live. You don't have time to really think about. Right. You're just, you just prepared like a few things, but mostly you're, you're having a conversation, right. you yeah. know. But it took me a while before I could calm down and just be like, okay. And then I don't drink, so then I longer for me to come down. <laughs> uh, okay, you need to take a sip. <laughs> Why start now? <laughs> oh, but it's been really a pleasure to meet you yeah, and, and to here. have you on our show. And if you ever want to come back and tell us some more. Okay. Um, or teach us how to be a rock star. I okay. think that could be the next one. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. Well, if you guys want that, comment. Okay? Because otherwise, I won't know. So, yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you tried the drink. It's really great to have a refreshing drink on a hot summer day mm -hmm. like today. We are definitely having a late summer, so try some of our drinks. This could be a great drink for tomorrow afternoon or even tonight if you're getting together with some friends. You have a question? Somebody wants to know the top rock star tip you have. Oh, oh okay. Top rock star tip. Um, Top rock star tip is <clears throat> tell a story. You have to use storytelling to engage with the audience. You can't just be talking about what you do because facts don't stay in people's minds. Only emotion can move people. Only emotion, you know, can touch people. So if you if you get to talk about what you do, always focus on Always focus on why you do what you do and use a story to illustrate why you do what you do instead of just telling people, oh, I do this and this and that because it happens to me all the time when I go to networking events, I get a stack of business cards and when I go home, I don't remember who's who. Okay, mm -hmm. you do not want that. You want to make an impression where people don't even have to look at your business card. They remember your name mm -hmm. and then they should, that you, should, you should work out catchphrase so that people can remember you with the catchphrase. What's your catchphrase? Well, um, I actually, it's, I'm better at helping people get, you know, 
whip up the catchphrase and myself. So for me, my catchphrase is really simple. You know, I just usually say I'm an award-winning storyteller. And because not a lot of people in my field, so usually people will remember that. Or usually people will ask me, oh, so what kind of stories do you tell? And once I get into it, usually, you know, I won't end up, my business card won't end up in the trash because people can't remember. <laughs> so, yeah. But I'm also good at like helping people come up with a catchphrase. I can't wait to hear what catchphrase she comes up for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah, I promise you. Doesn't matter what you do, I always find a way to do it. So, okay, yeah, so. I'm excited. All right, well, we'll save that for the next okay. one. All right, she's gonna come up with the catchphrase for me. Um, but I do agree with you. Honestly, I really don't. I go to a lot of trade shows, and one of my biggest pet peeves is when people just want to take a business card, and they didn't even talk to me. Right. They didn't even say hello. They just come by, and they just pick up a business card. What What are they doing with these business cards yeah. at the end of the whole thing, you know? So I start telling a story about those business cards, and I imagine that they're actually building a bonfire, and they needed that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Maybe, you never Maybe. know. <laughs> Honestly, you, yeah. should, you should really at least write something down that you remember that person. But yeah, something is is wrong when you're just collecting business cards. Yeah, I really. think nowadays with the digital age, uh, I think um, you know the human connection is really what's missing mm -hmm. to me. Absolutely. Um, people go by the day, you know, look at the phones from the phones to the computer, back to the phone to the computers. So sometimes you can go by without talking to one person. And people don't even want to talk anymore. This is text. Exactly. So the more human connection you lose, um, the more it's going to be hard for people to to really drop in and speak, you know, from their heart instead of speaking from the head. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do you think we can get it back? I think we can get it back. We have it in us. Mm -hmm. People just don't use it. It's like a muscle. But right? I see people even out in restaurants and and they're sitting with each other, having a meal, but they're on their phones. You, you know? have to be very disciplined. You have to set boundaries, for yes. sure. You have to say, okay, we're having a meal, we're not gonna look it out, and just put it away. Yeah. You really have to be very disciplined about it. You know, you have to fight. You have to fight the urge. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I, I really hope we get it back. I do think, I very much feel sad that, you know, there is a little bit of that human mm -hmm. connection that has been slowly slipping away yeah, totally. you know, over the last decade or so. Yeah. It's been gotten, it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse for sure. It's gotten worse, yeah. you know. And there are so many different social media outlets too, so it's like you have to do here, you have to do there. Right. And I had somebody posting yesterday that I saw a post on Facebook that said, what is the purpose of the stories? on Facebook because it's really just repeating what you're you know what you've already posted right. and it really doesn't make any sense it just seems like a more of a repetitive thing um, and I I have to say that I you know I don't disagree you know um, I know it disappears after 24 hours but still what's the purpose of doing it there and on a post you know just well I actually for me I don't sometimes I try to put different content in the story than the post. Mm -hmm. yeah. That that makes more yeah, sense yeah. if you just want to put something out there and right. then have it disappear. But this person was specifically saying, because it, it when you post, mm -hmm. it says, do you want to share it to your right. story? So you've already posted on, on your timeline, right. but then it's asking you if you want to share it. Right. Um, and that's what they were in particular talking about. But um, I, I get it, but you know, it, it is a lot. There's yeah. just so much that we have to, you know, we're always creating content too. Right. So wherever we're going, we're taking the pictures to create that content of what we're going right. to post. Um, are we really thoroughly enjoying ourselves while we're there or are we just worried about creating that content? Yeah. I know? think a lot of people are missing the, the, the joy from the present moment mm -hmm. because they get so caught up trying to take pictures, trying to, you know, film, you know, with their phones and everything. And they're totally missing out on the joy that just by being there mm -hmm. and, and enjoying the moment, right? Mm -hmm. So that yeah, that's totally something you know been uh, been missing. Yeah. So we got into we philosophy a little bit here. <laughs> 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 we digressed. Yeah. But actually, those were, those were really good points, and you know, again, another. Maybe you can do a new commercial on that. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Who wants to pay for it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Something, you know, maybe a 
another sort of health management, because this is yeah. another health management is, kind of it, issue, it, it you know. really a health management issue. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe they'll pay for us. Maybe. All right. Any more questions, comments? Great. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and uh, we'll see you next week. Okay, bye. bye.